Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for today's discussion is on shielding effectiveness. Earlier on, we already concluded that shielding effectiveness actually depends on three factors. Number one, absorption. Number two, reflection. And number three, multiple reflection. Today, we are going to concentrate on reflection. So there will be two series, part A and part B for the reflection. Today will be the part 23 series discussion. The earlier on discussion on EMC, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to sincerely appeal to you guys to help this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much, guys. We really need your support in order to improve the service of this channel. Thanks again. What is reflection loss? Impedance discontinuity at boundary encourage reflection of wave. So what does this sentence mean? Okay, for example, a few actually propagate along the air, which has an impedance characteristic of 377 ohm. When they actually hit a shoe, the impedance characteristic actually change. When the impedance characteristic change, it is also called as impedance discontinuity. When impedance discontinuity occur, it actually encourage reflection of wave. So you can see from here, when the wave propagate along the air, you can see that there is no reflection because the impedance is constant at 377 ohm. When it actually it hit the shield, okay, there will be an impedance discontinuity. And if this shield is a conductive material, most of the field will be able to reflect back, especially true for electric field, which I'm going to explain later on. Okay, the amount of reflection loss depends on the relationship between the impedance of the wave and the impedance of the shield. In short, the bigger the difference between them, the impedance, okay, the better shielding effectiveness it is. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram here. Right in the middle is the shield with a characteristic impedance as I denote as Z2. On both sides of the shield is the wave impedance. Again, I like to denote the characteristic impedance as Z1, as you can see from here. Okay, when a few, okay, for this case, an electric field hit the shield, okay, this will result in two few. One, they actually continue to penetrate through the shield, which I like to denote as E1. Another few will be actually reflected back, which I like to denote them as ER1. Okay, under electric field, under this first boundary, most of the few will be able to reflect back. This is the calculation of reflected wave with respect to the incident wave. Okay, so next, this is actually what we want to achieve. We want to know the amount of E2, which is the magnitude of the wave that successfully penetrate through the shield. Okay, again, you can see from here, E1 actually hit on a second boundary. We call this second boundary. Okay, and then some of them will be able to successfully penetrate through the second boundary, which I denote them as E2. Again, because there is an impedance discontinuity, reflection actually occur. So I would like to denote this as ER2. Okay, so let's remember this. Our objective is to find what is E2. Okay, so let's quickly discuss this. Okay, so in order to find E1, if I know my incident wave, and then incident wave minus the reflector wave, 
I will be able to know my E1. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier on, this equation is defined by most of the RF engineering book. In order to find E1 by the energy conservation, okay, I assume that energy cannot be created and cannot be destroyed. So if I know my incident wave, if I minus away my refractor wave, I will be able to find what is E1, okay, which is shown over here. I already know what is my refracted wave. I can rewrite my refracted wave as shown over here. Okay, so this is an equation that I've done on the previous slide. Okay, I put it here so that the discussion will be much more easier. From this equation, I see a common factor of E0. So I take up E0, which result this equation here. Okay, again, I'd like them to make a common factor. So this one will be multiplied by Z1 plus Z2, okay, which is shown over here. Okay, and then this is minus Z1, minus, minus become positive Z2. Okay, from here, I actually see that Z1 minus Z1, which cancel of the Z1 effect in result. Okay, this is the equation that I obtain. Okay, so this is E1. Okay, what is the amount of E1 with respect to the incident wave? So this is the portion that able to penetrate through the first boundary. Okay, so this is what I have done on the previous slide. Okay, again, I told you that the objective is to find E2. Okay, so in the interest of time, okay, if you repeat all this, you should be able to find E2. But let me show you a shortcut here. Okay, for example, for, for the first case on the first boundary here, this is the incident wave. This is what I want to find. And then from here, this is actually E2 is what I want to find. And E1 now is the incident wave. Okay, earlier on, the wave actually traveled from Z1 to Z2. Now it's from Z2 to Z1. So Z1, okay, I need to change to Z2. And Z2, I need to change to Z1. And in result, I actually can obtain this equation here. Okay, remember, okay, if you want, you can always redo this. You will still arrive at this equation here. Okay, but I just want to show you a shortcut here. Because this is the same outcome. Okay, now instead of E0, it becomes E1. So all the E0 replaced by E1. Okay, and then remember this Z1 penetrate through Z2. And then now is Z2 go into Z1 space. So this is how I get the E2 with respect to E1. Okay, from here, okay, I see this E1 term. Okay, E1 is actually equal to this whole term here. So I can rewrite the equation. So this whole term is E1, okay, which is obtained from here. And then this part here, I rewrite behind here. Okay, so from here, I can compute that 2 times 2 is equal to 4, Z1, Z2, and I have this Z1 plus Z2 squared here. Okay, so I also can assume for magnetic field is exactly the same as electric field. Okay, with this, I like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.